What's up, guys? It's Ben here with Ben's Election Predictions, your most accurate political forecaster for the 2020 presidential election. I was only off by one electoral vote and only got two states wrong, so that kind of canceled each other out in terms of electoral votes. Um, but today, I'm, I'm not going to focus on the past because I'm a predictor. What, we're going to look at the future. So we're going to look at the Virginia governorship race, um, which is between um, Glenn Youngkin and Terry McAuliffe. Um, and this is a, a really interesting race. Um, in 2021, I, I think it's going to be kind of the uh, biggest race. We, we did have the, the California, California runoff, which wasn't particularly close, but this is kind of the race that's gathering a lot of media attention because of how close it is in the, in the polls, which I think might be surprising for some. So let's start out just kind of looking at the uh, polls here. So we do see that uh, McAuliffe is up by an average of 2.3 percentage points. And this is a uh, weighted average. Um, and I, I think that's important to e emphasize here. And if we actually bring it to the average as of today, he's only up by 1.7. But what we do see here, here is that um, uh if we think about the margin of error and the statistical significance here, um, it is it is essentially a statistical tie. Um, so uh, we we do see that um, most of the polls are actual ties. So this B plus poll by Soviet University, um, we see it's uh, forty six to forty five. Um, in this uh, poll done by v VCU, which I don't trust completely just because we aren't even getting above 80% here. But we, we, we can see that in, in some of the highest rated polls, we are seeing just ties across the, the, the board. Um, and then some where Youngkin is ahead and then some where uh, McAuliffe is ahead. Um, I think that's some of the uh, gold standard uh, polls. However, I'll get into later why. The, the polls will not always be accurate, and in this case, I don't think that they will be. We see that the the Monmouth poll, A plus or A poll, and they have it tied um, about two weeks out. And right now, we are currently one week from election day. And if we look at real real clear politics, that this gives us kind of a uh, larger view of the um, polls taken. But we can see that while um, in the past it might. Uh, might not necessarily have been as close. Um, coming in closer to election day, we're starting to see more ties, um, and this race is definitely getting closer. So, where do I stand right now? So, if we look at the predicted markets, um, 90, 90 days out, this was very similar, I, I thought, to kind of the uh, California re recall. Um, it was about 80-20. Um, even 80, 85, 15 at some point. Some, I, I, I think generally speaking, okay, so we have the the Democrat winning 80, 82% of the time. That's what it was priced at. But recently, we, we've seen as more volume has come in um, that this race is getting closer. And I, I'll kind of get into more of the uh, details of, of the race. Um, what are the... Um, most salient um, political issues. Uh, wh what what is each candidate trying to do in this case? But we we can see that right now the momentum is in Glenn Youngkin's camp, um, and I, I I think that many people didn't think that this race was going to be close. I mean, Virginia has trended blue for a while. Um, the the last time that a presidential candidate won in Virginia was in two thousand and four with George Bush. Obama won it twice. Hillary Clinton won it, and Biden in 2020 won it by 10 points, which is a significant margin, 54% to 44%. But as we know, that the, the uh, state politics and federal politics are different. So I do want to take a look at the 2013 gubernatorial election where Terry McAuliffe was on the uh, ballot. So given this was eight years ago, when uh, Virginia wasn't as as blue, uh, we do see that he won. We do see that there was a big libertarian presence as well. They, they took 6.5% of the vote. So if this had gone all to the Republican, then he, he would have won. Um, however, in 2021, we do not see a big libertarian presence. One thing that I do think is important here 
is looking at the final results number. So it was 2.6 in Terry McAuliffe's direction. But if we look at the polling average, which I think is down here, we see that on the real core politics, they had a margin of McAuliffe at 6.7%. So if we take the uh, difference here, we can see that McAuliffe was overestimated by over four percentage points. And what, why I think this is, this is relevant is because we, uh, uh, there was a Democrat uh, as, as president, pr President Barack Obama um, was president in, in, in 2013. So you, you, you would think in kind of a non-presidential -E, uh, election year that, that this gives the upper hand to the um, challenging um, party that isn't in the uh, White House, so, so the re Republican. Um, and we, we are in a, in a similar case in 2021, and, and, and I think this effect is even more so because I mean, President uh, Biden is deeply unpopular. Um, I mean, he, he started out being uh, above water right now in different polls. His, his popularity is about at 42% nationally. I, I think is around the average. In, in Virginia, I think it's around 47 or 48, just because it is a little bit more bluer than the nation, but still pretty low. Um, and we, we do see a similar trend kind of hold up in the, uh, uh, in the 2017 gubernatorial election. So th this race going into the election day, I, I remember reading a lot of uh, articles saying that, okay, this race is going to be very, very close, blah, blah, blah. Um, there's... Let me go down to the uh, polling just to show you here. So there were some polls that had Ed Gillespie up. So like in some of these um, more kind of right-wing pollsters. So Ralph Northam was only projected to win by 3.3. But if you remember, I mean, th this was after the uh, Charlottesville in in incident with uh, Trump. I mean, Trump was deeply unpopular like Biden was in, in 2017, especially in Virginia and I mean, w with the trends in Virginia, this result wasn't too surprising to me. So um, that the actual number ended up being um, Ralph Northam by 8.9. So there was a almost a 6% um, polling error in the Democrats' direction. So this time, as we saw before, I mean, I, I would say that this race is basically tied. Um, and okay, and then also just to uh, touch on, so the, 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 these are the trends that come that that kind of show um, Virginia coming more more blue on the presidential level. Um, we have Al Gore here in two thousand receiving forty four percent. So it, it, I, I would say it's almost shifted about ten points in the Democrats' uh, favor, and, and and this is mainly due to kind of the. Um, more su suburban growth in Vir Virginia, especially kind of in the northern Vir Virginia area, where there's a lot of government jobs, um, people who might be more inclined to support uh, big government up there. Um, so one last thing that I want to focus on is the approval rating. So Biden's approval rating or the favorability rating in Virginia is 48% compared to 41% for, for Trump. And honestly, so Biden won by 10 points. So the difference here is seven. I mean, of course, with the margin of, of, of error. So I think that if the presidential election were held today, that Biden would still win, but not by as much. And I, I think this is for several reasons that I can get into in future videos with the Afghanistan withdrawal, um, COVID, um, just uh, uh, other other things that. Um, people aren't too happy about with uh, Biden. But so what are the uh, candidate strategy here? So kind of first off, looking at Terry McCall, he is trying to tie um, Youngkin to Trump as much as possible. But because he knows that, that Trump is unpopular, that if um, that, that in the presidential race that the uh, Democrat won by 10 points. So he, he's like, if I can nationalize this race as much as possible, I should be able to win. So he, he, he likes to call um, Youngkin Trumpkin to, to, to try to make him. And, and Trump has endorsed Glenn Youngkin 
Um, Gwen Youngkin, I would say, is not um, like Trump in many ways. I, I think he's a he's less polarizing. I I think he's trying to appeal to moderates more than Trump would. So I do think that that, that the strategy is um, backfiring somewhat because T- T- Terry McAuliffe doesn't really have a platform besides just trying to tie Youngkin to um, Trump. One thing that is in um, M- McCall's favor right now is, is a president, um, Biden, Stacey Abrams, um, President B- Barack Obama, which I think is the best surrogate. That, that they're all campaigning for him, and there's a lot of national money in tr- trying to I- I- increase turnout because in, in Virginia, it's, because it tilts blue, increased turnout is going to help um, Terry M- M- McCulloch and the and the only reason that he would lose is if it, there's more enthusiasm on the Republican side, which it seems like there is right now, um, and so we can see that a lot of um, Terry McCulloch's Twitter feed, which is kind of the focus of, of campaign, is kind of attacks on Glenn Glenn Youngkin for and he's, and he's trying to um, tie Youngkin to maybe the the more extreme. Um, parts of the Republican Party, which would turn off kind of those um, v- Virginia s- suburban um, voters, which are going to be the very important block, um, kind of the, the swing voters in this case. So, um, Gwen Youngkin. So, where where the energy is? I, the, I, I would say there's a lot of energy for him. He's he's drawing uh, drawing massive crowds. Um, one thousand, two thousand, three three thousand people, which um, which I've seen. And th- th- this was one. In, in indicator for Trump when he was running. I mean, he was g- gathering these massive crowds while maybe he wasn't fundraising as much or, or having the poll numbers. Um, I, I think your crowd size can be an, an indicator of enthusiasm and um, it, it, it translates kind of like voter turnout w- within the Republican um, uh, party in Virginia. So one thing that Youngkin is really f- focusing on is the um, issue of ed- education, which typically I think has been more of, of a Democrat issue. But t- t- Terry McAuliffe did have one kind of hiccup in a debate when he said that parents should be should not be in charge of children's education. This should be kind of left to the uh, teachers and the e- educational bureaucrats. Um, I think this was a huge misstep by Terry M- 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 McAuliffe. And um, Young Ken is really trying to hammer in that he really wants parents to be in charge of it. He doesn't like mask mandates. He doesn't like vaccine mandates. He doesn't like critical race theory. And he thinks that um, it, 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 basically his message is that he trusts parents to make the, this de- decision, which I think is a, is a, pr- a pretty good message. Um, and I, I think Terry McGulf is re- responding by s- saying that, um, Youngkin is really go, going too far. Um, in this ad here, uh, Terry M- M- McAuliffe was cr- critical that 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 Youngkin is is su- suggesting in this that banning be loved, a book by Toni Morrison. Um, that that's his, his, his platform is banning books. Um, and you can see that this got ratioed here, but um, this is Youngkin's message. So. What is my overall final prediction for this race? So looking at the uh, polls, we, we, we can see that it has gotten closer. Right now, I do think that Terry McCullough is going to win this race by between one and two points, or maybe even zero and one points. I think this race is going to be very, very close. Um, I don't think it's going to be like the uh, California runoff when people thought it was going to be close because the polls said it. However, I, I think that the Democrats are really going to be focusing here. And I, I, I think at the end of the day, um, overcoming that 10-point margin that was in the, the pre- presidential race in, in November is going to be hard, hard to overcome. So I, I think that this race is going to shift seven, eight, nine points in, in the Republicans' direction, which is, which is a massive uh, uh, amount. Um, for any place, I just don't think it's it's going to be enough. Um, and while I do think Gwen Youngkin is probably the best candidate for the re- repu- Republicans, and and, and while the the has misstepped a a lot, 
Um, I I do think with bringing in President Obama, bringing in Stacey Abrams, I do think that will buoy him enough to victory in one week from now. But I, I'm really curious, what do y'all think? Um, are y'all betting on predicted? Um, we see that the energy is in Gwen Youngkin's camp. Do you, do you think I'm wrong? Wrong. I, I really want to hear your opinion. And uh, please like, subscribe, and uh, share to all your friends. Thanks, guys.